Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Nabila Show on Mufta Nabila Abla YouTube channel, your home of exclusivity. Since the last episode of the Nabila Show, I've had a plethora of questions. People have been asking me for updates in relation to the appointment of the Black Stars technical team. And um, I've, I've not been here to give you an update uh, simply because there were so many things that were happening behind the scenes and I needed to be very definite on what I was going to report. Many would recall that in the last episode, we, we mentioned that it was 99% certain that Chris Hilton was going to get a Black Stars job. And that we have also mentioned that he had rejected the role of a technical advisor to the Black Stars technical team. But the FA announced that he has accepted it. And guess what? As we said, we're going to leave 1% window for the unforeseen circumstances that could, could happen. And indeed, the unforeseen circumstances happened. Not unforeseen entirely. Um, when people were asking me for the updates, I could have come with updates. Especially on Saturday when members of the executive committee were demanding answers from the GFA vice president and the president, Kento Kriko and Makado, um, uh, on their WhatsApp group. Followers of my Twitter page might have seen it at Muftar and Nabla and Escort Nabla might have seen it. And uh, I tweeted that they were fighting. They were they actually even said we we reported on Saturday on my social media pages, that is my Facebook and my Twitter pages that following that last episode of the Nabla show, the video interestingly found its way onto the executive council of the FA WhatsApp group where the, they started demanding answers from the GFA president and his vice because we had mentioned that the GFA president has spoken to Chris Hilton, Makado has met Chris Hilton, they offered him roles like the technical advisor role that he rejected and he, he rejected the technical advisor role uh, based on a question he asked them. He said you have a technical advisor, a uh, technical director, you are not engaging me for a technical advisor, what sort of position is that? He felt it was more of duplication of roles and was not willing to take that. But why did he finally accept to play that role in the interim when Ghana comes up against Nigeria? I'll, I'll be explaining that briefly. But let me tell you some, some, some of the interesting things that have happened. The, the Ghana FA president, Keto Kriko, returned to the country on Monday and um, he has had a couple of consultations. And some of those consultations included the appointment of Chris Hilton as a technical advisor, though Chris rejected that role earlier. When Chris Hilton was offered the role of a technical advisor, he gave them a, he asked a simple question. You have a technical director. You are engaging me for the role of a technical advisor. What is, what is that role? I, I don't understand this role you are going to give to me. But F.A. had to make it clear to him that um, before you sign papers, we want you to take a look at the team and be convinced yourself before you accept it. We want you to get closer to the team, get close to the dressing room, offer insights. Um, what the FA have said is that maybe by the time Ghana is done playing Nigeria, they will know the fingerprints of Chris Hilton, what he has offered to the team. So that is basically it. Why did the FA decide to appoint him a technical advisor? They needed to satisfy people. People have said Chris Hilton was in Ghana for holidays, and I, I have insisted here that Chris Hilton was brought to come and take over the Black Stars coaching job. Not for any technical advice, group. not for any holiday. So, for the FA to satisfy the politicians, and also the difficult angle that I've not mentioned has to do with the Otoado angle. You would recall that in my last episode, it was quite difficult explaining what the FA were not going to do with the angle of moving to Chris Hilton at the expense of Otoado and all that. It was quite difficult for the FA. And I don't want to be in the shoes of the GFP president. Because I have convinced Borussia Dortmund that I need their, their coach. How do I go back to tell them that? Okay, 
I'm not going to use your coach anymore. I'm going to use Chris Hilton. So it was, it was quite difficult. How was he going to allow politicians to have a right as members of the leadership of the FA would describe it? Some of them have said that uh, the FA, uh, pol uh, the politicians are now playing football with them. They think that the, the politicians, uh, their mode of trying to push the shooting down their throat had changed and they were not willing to listen to the FA. So, yeah, the FA felt that they've been finally given some kind of respect as to who should manage. Before the FA announced the technical team, they did not involve government. They did not involve the Ministry of Youth and Sports. They did not involve um, uh, members of the Jubilee House. It was they, they single-handedly decide, decided that the technical team, and now they will and give it to you. The Ministry of Youth and Sports. What we were made to understand is that the politicians also had an interesting conversation. Politicians want the FA to have their way, so when it doesn't work, they'll come and say, FA, you had your way, it never worked. Now, we are going our way. That's why I was made to understand that um, uh, there were some phone calls between the members of the Ministry of Youth and Sports and some individuals in government and the interesting thing was even that I don't like describing the person as Prime Minister because I've had a lot of feedback from most of you who said that we don't want the Prime Minister thing. He was the only person who objected the decision of the FA to put Chris on an or on a technical advisory rule. If you're going to hire him, you hire him. If you're not going to hire him, let him go. I don't want this diplomatic thing of, uh, it's a, he's a what? Uh, technical advisor to the black staff. No. You either give him the job or you're not giving him the job. But there was a blessing from the top that uh, he, should, he should allow them to go to decide. And that they have decided. Chris Hilton held a meeting with the Minister of Youth and Sport. That lasted for close to three hours. This was last week, Thursday. The reports have said Friday. The meeting did not happen on Friday. It happened on Thursday. The meeting lasted for close to three hours. He brought everything to bear. What he brings to the table as head coach of the club, if he's given the, the role as head coach of the Black Star. So he has assurances from all corners. That three-hour meeting with the minister, it was a three-month meeting, actually. So people were actually surprised at how the story came out and all that. But who set up the meeting? The person who set up the meeting well, definitely was going to be the same person who was going to let us know that they are, they are grinding gradually to get to what they, they, are, they are seeking. And indeed, they've gotten it. Chris Hilton will officially become the Black Stars coach in April. Um, a two-year contract, we understand, is, is going to be prepared. Two-year contract. Um, whether Ghana qualifies for the World Cup or not, it doesn't change anything. That's it. That's basically it. So, at this point, that's the only thing we can say for now. So, Chris Hilton, Black Stars coach, he takes the job in April, but anything can happen. I've, I, that's what I always try to put the window of possibilities. If Utoano is able to qualify this team to the World Cup, it will be interesting to see that the promise of the FA of making Chris Hilton the Black Stars coach in April it could be out of the window because players adapt to coaches differently. They can easily adapt to Otto Ado. That will get everyone convinced that Otto Ado can do the job. What, what then becomes of um, Chris Hilton? 
though they insist that Chris Hutton is going to be in charge, whether Ghana qualifies or not. So we'll wait to see what happens in April. But we can report that a two-year contract is being prepared. We don't know Chris Hutton's salary. We, what we knew was that the last engagement they had with him uh, when CK was fired was about $80,000 that he wanted and all that. We've had media reports of $120,000. We don't have that information. As and when we do, we'll definitely bring it to you. Um, we had mentioned that Didi Dramani, uh, in our previous episode, we mentioned Didi Dramani was recommended by someone the GFA president describes as his godfather. We had also mentioned about George Borton. George Borton is very close to the, the vice president. He's a very good friend. Why did they drop Ibrahim Tanko? In the in the list, Ibrahim Tanko. Before the FA left to to Germany, it was Otoado and Ibrahim Tanko who were going to be appointed. If they don't get Otoado, as we've always said, Ibrahim Tanko was the second choice. So what what changed in their last meeting? The critical thing they mentioned is that Ibrahim Tanko, unfortunately, is not active. They say he should make himself active. He should start coaching local teams. The Black Stars job is not a job that he should always be waiting for. He should manage local teams too. He doesn't want to work. There's a political angle to this conversation that sometimes I feel is very petty. Claims are that he's a friend of Jose Kweku Jose Palmer. And Palmer and Ket are not in good terms. Those are some of the claims. I feel it's petty. I don't want to believe it is true. But my informants. They always don't know what they, what they are talking about. So, it could be part. Um, Ibrahim Tanko, again, was more of the choice of government to the minister, people within Jubilee House and all that. Yeah, so he was also the, the, the other thing. But Kurt has served the interest of his, um, his godfather. McAdo has also been able to rope in George Watson, George Watson had, had rejected the Blasters assistant role twice. What changed this time around? Come on. Come and be in the team. If you are within the team, the chances of getting the job to is high. And guess what? Well, we got the story of Milovan Rivert coming to coach the Black Stars. We mentioned and I'll try and look for, up for that tweet so that you take a look at it. I'll put that tweet on your screen. We mentioned that Otto Ado was willing, George Watson was willing to partner Otto Ado to mind the Black Stars. But he was not willing to come and be an assistant to an expatriate, which was the offer the FA gave to him. So now that Otto Ado is in charge, he's back. He's accepted the role. He wants to partner Otto Ado. He was willing to do it the first time, which was September last year. It was Otoado, but was not willing to do it if it was Milo. So that was why he didn't take it then. Now he's back. Now he has taken it. There were a couple of other things that have happened. I, I, I do not know what the future holds for George Burton and Didi Dramani if... Uh, Ghana qualifies for the World Cup or not, and Otoado is no longer in charge, and Chris Hutton is coming into the picture. I do not know what the future holds for them, but what I do know is that whether Ghana qualifies for the World Cup or not, uh, we are made to understand that Chris Hutton will take up the job uh, in April, like I mentioned earlier. It's quite interesting. Uh, I would be surprised if the FA decides to go on that tangent because if Otoado Peace Nigeria, it shows that he's competent and can do the job. And I'd be wondering why the FA would be wanting to make changes after the man has successfully qualified the country to the World Cup. I'll be wondering why. But one thing we do know is certainty is that Otoado does not want to leave Russia at Dortmund. And that is the impression people, people have got. Uh, the other thing too is that um, we we, we had talked about how um, Chris Hilton uh, met with some of the power brokers within the 
political arena and all that phone calls were flying left right and center and all that and and everything so most of the things that have happened is they're quite interesting they're quite funny but let's wait till 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 april so that we'll, we'll have something more definite to tell you we'll continue to give you updates on on some of the things someone like ck akono there's an interesting update on him we'll share we'll share in a different in a blessed episode but we're not sharing that one here hopefully when when we're satisfied with what we know we'll go ahead with it and then we share with you here um so for the black stars coaching job the politics that happened behind the scenes how we arrived here with uh with Hilton, with a technical advisor the management committee of the black stars too they just made changes uh Mr. Jekum was already the vice to George Amwako. So they just took out George Amwako and said Papa. And Samu Kofo is still there. They brought in Stephen up here. They brought in Sikins. Sikin too has been brought in. And um, uh, the, other, the other two, there are like seven of them on the management committee. So those are just the changes they've made. And I mentioned one thing. The management committee of the black class is a political position. Politicians have got huge interest. And guess who is now the chairman of that management committee? A classmate of the secretary to the president. Whatever meaning you want to read into it, you can do that yourself. Um, there are so many things that, if I want to talk about this conversation, would we'll drag and drag and drag and drag. But I'll try and bring back the the question and answer session on the Napola show, so that we can have a huge interaction. The last one, which lasted about half an hour, was was great. Many of you had asked that we should do it again. I actually wanted to do one on Monday, but I needed more clarity on what the FA president was was doing. He arrived in Ghana around 8 a.m. Monday morning, so I needed more clarity of one of the things, some of the things he was going to do before the Q and A. That's why the Q and A never came. But I did share some things on on, on my social media pages in relation to to some of them. So. You can follow my social media page. If you don't get it on this on this channel, you get it on my social media pages. Though I'll always prefer to bring it to you here. Muftana Bilal Abdullah, Muftana Bilal Show. Thanks for your company.